DJ TV. governors in the southern part of the country they recently called for restructuring. They also uh, announced a ban on open grazing in the southern states. But despite that, the Attorney General of the Federation, Abuba Kamalami, SCN, uh, said, I mean, they didn't know what they were talking about. But uh, what exactly is your own opinion on open grazing? Um, what steps are you planning to take to put an end to farmers' head as clash? You want me to contradict my my attorney general? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, um, what I did was um, ask them to go and dig the Gazette of First Republic when people were very loose. There's cattle roots and grazing area. Cattle roots, where when they are moving up country, north to south or east to west, they have to go through there. If you allow your cattle to stray into any farmer's farm, you are arrested. The farmer is invited to submit his claims. The alcali or the judge will say, oh, I pay. If you can't, the cattle is sold. And if there is any balance, you are given. And people are behaving themselves. And in the grazing areas, they built earth dumps, put uh, windy mills, in some places, even veterinary departments, so that the herders are limited. Their roots is known. Their grazing area is known. If they have any problem from the locality is known. But I'm telling you, this is rushing to the center. You know, people just, oh, oh, I think. So I asked for the gazettes, you know, to make sure that you, those who encroached on these cattle routes and grazing areas will be dispossessed, you know, and, uh, and try to bring some order back in, into the cattle areas. The problem is trying to understand the culture of the, um, cattle rearers. Um, there is a cultural distinction between the Tibs and the Fulanis. So the governor of uh, Benway said, I'm not uh, disciplining the cattle rearers because I'm one of them. Uh, I cannot refuse to say I'm not one of them, but, but he's been very unfair to me. And I told him that the Nigerian cattle rearer was not carrying anything more than a stick, sometimes with a machet to cut uh, some trees and, and give you to them anymore. But those sophisticated ones, they are good with AK-47. So from um, all the Sahel areas, people rush to Nigeria, you know, and uh, Fulani from Mauritania or from Central Africa look the same. So they think they, they are Nigerian ones. And uh, I assure you that we are trying to resuscitate these cattle roots, grazing areas, and make them accountable. And then this cancelling of taxes. It's ordinary people like it, but the problem of accountability, you know? When taxes are being paid, people are, are behaving themselves. But now without taxation, people are doing what they like. Yeah, yeah. yeah that brings up the question of power devolution. All these taxation things. These were things that were working in the first problem, but they are no longer working because of forest. And that's why people are talking about restructuring the federation to make it work for the people. And it was part of the APC manifesto in 2015. I mean, what is your position now on devolution of powers? Devolution of power, you have to define it. Yes. It's the legislative list. Take some of the things to residual, and keep a few in concurrent, but you have a strong defense in the center. Well, virtually 
local governments are virtually killed. Do you know it? Yes, sir. The three tiers of government, federal, state, and local government, if, you are being followed, if they are being followed properly, wouldn't have all these social problems. But the problem is the local government have been virtually killed. And that is not good for this country. It's not good for this country because those who became the local government chairman have been compromised. If your local government is, say, entitled or is supposed to receive 300 million, a letter will be prepared for you to sign that you have received 300 million and you are given only 100 million. So how can we reduce the powers of governors and give more powers to local governments by writing a new constitution? And reduce the power of the president too. While we're at it. <laughs> mm, the super president has a lot of power. OK, um, <laughs> I, I think um, this question of accountability is very important. Um, the schooling, especially education, suffered so is suffering so much. If, uh, for example, during our generation, I spent nine years in boarding school, and the teachers then treat us as they treat their own children. If you do well, you are brought before the classroom and praised. If you misbehave. They remove your thing and plug you there in front of the class. So you just have to behave yourself. But now, one of the chaps from Ogun State, Fasa Bakari, he told me when he came back from America, he went to his alma mater, and he couldn't differentiate between the teachers and the, and the children there. You, you see, the teachers, uh, used to take students as their children, and they have all the time for them. But problem, the standard virtually has collapsed. That means we have a lot of problem. Well, it takes us to uh, the next question. Mm. The uh, northern part of the country, mm. the schools yeah. have been subjects of attacks. Now, if these schools are perpetually being attacked by bandits and terrorists, and you want to lift 100 million mm -hmm. uh, out of poverty. And the appearance are also on that right. How do you think that the uh, goal of 100 million people out of poverty can be achieved? Well, try and appreciate what efforts the federal government has done. One, we have removed all the service chiefs and the inspectors in our police. We made new ones. We allow them to go around and see the problem. They have been part of it all the time, but now they are in charge. And we made sure that their priorities is to make sure they have brought normalcy, people to accept the responsibility of their offices and for form. They are working very hard on that. We cannot give it enough publicity because we don't want to give Faria warning to the real criminals. The ones on North East, you know, the ones in South South, you know, the problem is in North West. The same people, same culture, killing each other, stealing each other's cattle, burning their villages. As I said, we are going to treat them in the language they will understand. We have given the police and the military power to be ruthless. And you watch it, in a few weeks' time, there will be difference. Because we told them that if we keep on, if we keep people away from their farms, we are going to starve. And the government cannot control the public. If you allow hunger, you know, to permeate the whole society, you, the government will be in trouble. And we don't want to be in trouble. We are already in enough trouble. So we want them. And uh, sooner than later, you will see the difference. Yeah, now, yes, you talked about talking to the people of Northeast, 
in the language you understand. Mm. That is the old, I mean, it, there's a crisis around that language. So it shows that because you were a former military man, you are talking about, I mean, using force to restore order. But it's understood in another way, especially given what happened last week, when you spoke about the Southeast IPOP and all that. One, the controversy of Twitter. When is the government going to lift ban on Twitter? That to to lift the ban. No, the, the suspension of Twitter. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, I mean, when is Nigeria are expecting when, Nigeria, when the government will lift the ban? And two, how are you going to resolve the crisis in the Southeast? Well, South East, um, I, I was encouraged by what I had. Nobody told me. Two statements from the South South. One by um, elderly people. South South. No, South South. South South. Yes, by elderly people. They said this time around there will be no access to sea. I'm sure you will understand what they mean. Again, the youth made the same statement. That encouraged me. So that is a It's just like a dot in a circle. If they want to exist, they would have no access to anywhere. And the way they are spread all over the country, having businesses, having property, I think a pop doesn't know what they are talking about. In any case, we said we will talk to them in the language they understand. We will organize the police and the military to pursue them. That's what we can do. And we will do it. What about Twitter? Twitter? Yes. That I will give to myself. <laughs> <laughs> well? <laughs> well, still on the Southeast, Mr. President. <laughs> How do you plan to include more people from the Southeast, and indeed the South in general, to include more in people government. in the Southeast, and indeed the South in general, in your government, especially in security services and MDAs? You look at, um, say, NNPC, you look at the military. People who have been there for 18 years, or people who have been there say, you know, for 10 years. They trained in Zaria or in Abekuta. You know, they come through the ranks. And because uh, they, uh, served under all the circumstances, the crisis and everything, and they gradually rise to that status. And you think you just pick somebody just to balance up? These positions have to be earned. Those positions have to be earned. There are people who have been there for 10, 15 years. And you, you, just because you, uh, somebody will say, well, there's nobody. If you don't join, you are not forced to join. But when you join, you go through the rigmarole. You go through the problem throughout. And you learn by this system. Yeah, but you have to ask, in the case of the chief of army staff, there are almost 30 generals who have to be retired now or whatever because of the man, because of the rank of the current chief of staff. Do, uh, do, do you know why he was serving before he becomes the chief of army staff? In Maduguru. Uh -huh. In Maduguru, why? Uh -huh. You can't get to pick just somebody just he, because he is wearing uh, seniority uh, and make him. You, you put somebody who has been in the mill, who, who has suffered with the soldiers, they know him, he fought with them and, and so on. I, I, to tell you the truth, on individual basis, all these chaps, they, they know me. Because I want to, do, but I, I don't know them, I have forgotten them. Some of them, I, I don't know them. So professional experience was the factor. It is, because the soldiers, uh, to be effectively led, must be somebody they know they are alone to him. He, he exposes himself to him. He is... I believe, I believe the security services. I believe one of the things we're talking about is signaling and of belonging. 
beyond uh, security. South East, they want to be secretary to government. They want to be other things. Like you said, you've chosen two or three of them, like a cannibal as VP. So you've said you don't have anything against them. So why don't you, as father of all, bring them more together? Make them feel belonging, make them feel like your children. You better get a list of uh, our civil servants if you, if you think there are no people from the southeast. There are people from the southeast, but they know they have to go through the mill. Well, Mr. President, I was going to ask you mm -hmm. about the challenges you referred to earlier about fighting corruption mm -hmm. and how difficult it is under a democratic system. Yeah. But there's this uh, perception, uh, general perception that well, the best way to escape prosecution is to just join the ruling party. Because one or two are going to join the APC, you think that was why they joined? Well, it's a, it's a matter of perception. What this administration can do is to make sure that the APC lasts beyond this administration. And we start a registration from holding unit to ward, to local government, to the state, so that the APC we we'll know how many of them there are in, in, in state by state, in even local government by local government, so that by the time this administration goes, there will be family on the ground and they can continue. And that is the best thing politically for the country and for the party. So it's not as if, but the, the, to have the world benefit, people believe that once you join APC, the brew, that your broom is just for us to carpet. No, you are very, very unfair to us. <laughs> now, uh, to power rotation. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's an agreement in APC to move power from north and south. But what parts of the south, or <laughs> where do you think the president should, should come from to keep your legacy going? Should we allow the party to decide? I have just told you that we started from bottom up. And uh, I gave uh, the acting chairman to the end of this month, June, he asked for an expansion. For them, the, the committee, we developed terms of reference, we put our committee, you know, and they are going to give me this report by the end of the month on the convention we are going to conduct and then arrange the general elections, you know, up to 2003, all the elections. And we started, we will start this from bottom upwards so that members of the party will feel they are involved in decision making. Nobody is just sitting here in Lagos and asking them what to do. This is what we, we, we are arranging. So there's no succession plan? No, succession plan is depends on the party. We, we are going to leave that to the party. The party will sit and make its decision by uh, the constituencies, you know, they, they, they won and, and so on. So those who want uh, to be president, they better join APC. <laughs> <laughs>
speak to the business people and speak to the youth, especially the, and tell them that the federal government, no more vacancy, is full. Go to any state governor and ask him now to give you a contract or to give you a job. He will tell you there is no vacancy. The same thing with local government. So you may have a good degree, but you may die without having a job. Why? Because nobody is going to invest in an insecure environment. So I told them, I said they should tell the youth that if they want jobs, they will behave themselves, make sure Nigeria is secure so that people can come and invest. Nigeria is resourceful, people know it. We are a rich country. God has endowed us. But nobody can bring, uh, look at the two, today like, like 200 buses bought by the former governor of Lagos. Some of the, these uh, boys went and burned the vehicle. The governor made an album, came and I took the album and, and put it aside. I said, go and tell them to walk. Who will go and invest his money in an unstable environment? Nobody will. It's just common sense. So you behave yourself, you make Nigeria secure, and people will invest. So coming back to competition, <laughs> looking at the issue of, as you are petroleum minister, Mr. President, the issue of spending money for subsidies, which is taking money that should have been invested in infrastructure, which we also come to. How do we do with the subsidy question of petroleum and power? It's a very difficult question, and I suspect you know it. Nigerian electricity, they are oil, so it can't be too expensive. Nigerian petroleum is being uh, sold from here up to Ghana. At the pump station, Nigeria, people will take it, will close the borders, they put jerry cans, they, they ride the machine into through the bush. And if you try and give it the cost uh, and insist that it has to be economic, uh, uh, base. Nigeria will say this is their oil and they, and they will write and push you out of wherever you are, even if it is a, a presidential villa. They will push you out. They will say this is their oil. So what we want is to try to get the cooperation of customs, immigration, and this border guard so, so that it cannot be taken in substantial uh, amount. Customs are doing quite well because we are uh, uh, confiscating tankers, selling the petrol and selling the tankers, and, and the, the people whom we are disposing of this, they don't complain. They don't talk to anybody, they don't say it. Then the government has taken away their tankers and sold their petrol and so on. We are doing it. Mr. President, let's talk about debt service to revenue ratio. Under your watch, it has risen from about 40% to 90% thereabouts. And there are many who are complaining that, well, because of this heavy debt body, it's becoming very difficult to fund uh, infrastructure. Uh, what measures uh, is your government uh, putting in place to diversify the economy and to further increase revenue? Well, you talk, we start talking about infrastructure. I would like you to check how much we are earning from 1999 to 2014. Our production. If you check, you'll find out the average production was 2.1 million barrels a day. At the average cost of 100 American dollars per barrel. So 1999 to 2014, we are earning 2.1 million times 100 each day. Look at the state of the infrastructure. Look at our roads. Look at the rail. Look at power. And tell me which country developed without infrastructure. And did you ask those regimes or that regime, whichever it is, what have they have done with the money? No roads, no rail, no power. I sit here and see the amount of casual things we are getting between Lagos and Ibadan alone on a daily basis. Tomorrow I'm going to
to commission the rail, the roads. And as people who are living in Lagos now going to Ibarin or coming up country, how easy they have found it. This is what we have been doing. But what, what have they done with all the money they are getting? Look at power. There had been a lot of waste. There had been a lot of waste. Yeah, yeah yes, yes. I, I was calling you on, on the infrastructure. Your government has done quite a bit on infrastructure. But there is also something about infrastructure that is surprising to many Nigerians. You are carrying a lot of this infrastructure to the to Niger Republic. Road, rail, people are wondering what is the attraction of Niger Republic? Why is there obsession by the Gwari administration towards Niger Republic? How many neighbors do you have? Both of individual and the national rule. You have to you have to cultivate your neighbor. If you don't, you are in trouble. If you could recall when I came, I went to Chad, I went to Niger, I went to the Cameroons. Look at what is happening with us Boko Haram. If we are not in the uh, good relationship with Niger and Chad and Cameroon, Boko Haram would have done worse things to us than this. And you say I'm carrying to Niger. I told you our, uh, our, uh, the border between us and Niger is 1,500 kilometers. And in Niger, um, you see, I spoke to one Frenchman, and I have to tell you this. He spoke nonsense. I say, you people, in 1885, you sat down with ruler and pencil and draw lines. I say, I have first cousins in Niger. There are canoes, there are houses, there are Fulanis in the Niger Republic. Just as there are Yorubas in Benin, Republic and so on. You can't absolutely cut them off. But the rail, look at the plan, if you read the plan, how we are rehabilitating the rail. Niger, they have discovered oil too, as you know. And we don't want to allow them to go through Benin Republic. We want them to come through Nigeria. We hope they will decide when we take the rail up to Marathi that they will send all their exports and so on through Nigeria rather than through Benin. Because with the railways and the roads working, uh, both from Maiduguri to Fort Harcourt, from Kano to Lagos and so on, people will be very busy. And I believe if you make the infrastructure work, road, rail, I assure you that Nigerians will, be, will keep themselves very busy and they will leave you alone. But when the roads are not motorable, the rail is, is, is virtually crippled. People have so much time to, to, to harass you. Um, thank you very much for thinking that I'm okay. Um, I have never abandoned my farm. I still have got uh, a number of cattle. And um, when I leave, I will be going to my farm daily. I will try and keep myself busy. Between now and then, uh, I will try to keep on convincing Nigerians that I mean very well. Uh, I will make sure that uh, 
the three identifiable problems we have, security, economy, and fighting crime, I will continue to work on it. And uh, as I said, visibly, we made progress in the Northeast, we made progress in the South-South, but I'm overwhelmed almost by uh, south uh, northwest, and they are going to get it very soon. Well, Mr. President, uh, hmm? what will be the Buhari legacy? Well, I will allow Nigerians to, to, to discuss it. I hope they will be fair to me. I wouldn't like to say it myself. I would like Nigerians to try and spend time when we came, both economy and security, where we were, where we have been for the eight years and maybe around, and try to work out. I hope Nigeria will be fair to me. This is all I need. All Nigerians may be having fears. What's your message to the people of Nigeria today on your sixth anniversary on where we are and over the last few days? Last question. Yes, um, under the system, Nigerians would uh, say what they want. They want to, they are, they are all republics. Uh, they don't even talk of the resources, how we can disengage ourselves, uh, how we are going to share what we have invested when we are together, how are we going to share it out, how fair are we going to be to ourselves? Um, and try and see our population, our young population. If we cut ourselves into pieces, can we win the confidence of investors, real investors, people to come and build factories, employ people, produce goods and services, and then earn from taxation, from uh, employment. I don't like uh, the way Nigerian elite is allowing ignorant or careless people talking all over the place. We have so much uh, to, to learn and so much to guide together than to try and uh, uh, disorganize people's way of thinking, thinking that uh, if you become a, a republic, things will be all right. Let them see how, uh, how, how long it took us between 1960 and now, how we came about. We have consolidated it. Mr. President, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. DJ KTV.